morning. Welcome back to City Line. With me, as you saw in the wide shot, I have two of Tacoma's finest, <clears throat> the unsung heroes of our, our time. They always have been. Um, I have an enormous amount of respect and uh, gratitude for our Tacoma Police Department. So please join me in welcoming um, Officer Shelby Boyd. You have been with the Tacoma Police Department 12, go, almost going on 13 years. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you in the studio. And Officer Stephen Miller, you have been with Tacoma Police Department for 10 years almost. That's right. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. And thank you for taking time out of your busy day. Um, you almost didn't make it in because there was an incident that she left you at, and she said, you better show up. And thank you. I appreciate that. So for both of you, and a couple of our questions here are going to be for both of you because you both have such diverse backgrounds, um, and not to mention that we have two separate genders here on the couch with two separate uh, journeys that lead up to why you're here. So um, what attracted you to police work in general? And Shelby, we'll start with you. Well, before I was a police officer, I worked for a, a private industry. Um, and in that job, I did a lot of preparation for emergencies, for workplace violence, for earthquakes. And so I went through a lot of training on how to develop those programs for that company. Mm -hmm. And we practiced and practiced and practiced. You hoped it never happened. Yes. But inside of me, as a, a first responder in sorts, I wanted it to happen just so that I could truly see how far I had come. And so in that job, I worked with law enforcement a lot. And through relationships with those officers, I thought, this might just be for me. And it is for you. It is. Wonderful. All right, Officer Stephen, what's your story? I uh, first got my interest in uh, police work when I was a kid and listening to my DARE officer. And then, uh, and then I joined the military. I was a military police soldier with uh, 101st Airborne. Nice. Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And I uh, was recruited to to come out here to Tacoma to work and uh, left the military and, and uh, haven't looked back ever since, been here. Impressive. Thank you. Nice jump there, I love that. So, so what brought you both to consider working for the Tacoma Police Department? Because you mentioned you were recruited out here, but you probably did your research about Tacoma Police Department and what made you say yes? I had tested for several agencies in the area um, and uh, Tacoma just seemed to be the best fit for me. Uh, it's in the great northwest. It's a beautiful, it's off the Puget Sound. Mm. Uh, my wife and family wanted to, to come out west and just uh, take in, you know, Mount Rainier and enjoy all the hiking and fishing and hunting and stuff that comes with the great outdoors. But uh, Tacoma Police Department itself just uh, offered me the best, uh, best benefit package, the best, uh, best pay for the area. That's good to hear. Best experience. Because every police officer deserves that, given what you risk every single day. Thank you. And what about you, my dear? Why to come up to come a police department? Why not Seattle? So I was a single mom at the time, mm -hmm. and so I had two little ones at home that wanted to make sure mom came home every day. Wow. So I told them that I would do my homework, and so for an entire year, I looked at every single department within Pierce County. I wanted to stay close to my family, uh, raised in this area my whole life, did a little traveling in the meantime, but always came home. So I made a promise to them that for one whole year, I would do ride-alongs, I would do research, and that I would pick the department that I felt gave me the best opportunity to be successful, to have career options, and to make it home safe every night. And for me, riding with Tacoma and their family environment on the squads, um, and like Officer Miller said, the benefits for my children, um, Tacoma just provided all of it. Wow, you are a woman who does your research. Well, it kind of, kind of helps that you have those two little ones and you also have a family that you've made those promises to of, sure. of uh, I, I'll see you at the end of my shift. Absolutely. So what assignments have both of you had? Shelby, go ahead and go first. So for the entire time I've been at Tacoma, I've been on the east side of Tacoma as a mm. patrol officer. Mm. I uh, served six years as a community liaison officer in the 4-1 district on the east side. So, you know, shout out to the 4-1. And shout out to those community liaison <laughs> officers because, man, you get called for a lot of gray situations. You do. You do. Yeah. The, you know, the CLO job is you're, you're finding long-term solutions to a community problem. So you really form a relationship with the folks that live there. So while I was doing that, uh, I joined on to the public information officer cadre. So I'm a backup media person for the department when our PIO was off on vacation and 
Um, and then I'm also on the recruiting and hiring cadre currently. As you should be. Right here. What about you, Mr. Mister? I've worked uh, the south end of Tacoma for my entire 10 years here. I've worked a two-man car uh, with uh, different partners and different things like that. I was selected uh, for my department to be a firearms instructor for the, the department. I've worked uh, with the, the state criminal justice training commission at the police academy to, uh, to teach, at a, uh, teach firearms up there to the new recruits. Um, I'm currently a firearms instructor for the department for a pistol, a rifle, I'm an electronic control tool instructor and a reality-based tra uh, reality trainer for the department. And I'm also a, a police training officer, so I really like teaching, apparently. So. Yeah, and you, apparently you're good at it. I, I like to think so. Yeah, I think we should just call you James Bond and get <laughs> it over with, okay? Hope not. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to point out the differences between your uniforms, which mm -hmm. we didn't talk about, but when I got here and we were warming up. So first off, um, is it okay if I call you by your first names? Sure. I should be calling you, okay. Um, Officer Steve, sh um, put your foot up here. Let's, let's, I'm gonna get, no, I know. Come on, this is part of it. I always do a shoe cam. Can you? Can we? Okay, keep it up one more time. Can we get up a shot? Okay. So now, Shelby, put your foot up. Okay. So we have different. This is how I first noticed this because you have different <laughs> shoes on. And then you told me what, Officer Steve? Well, these are my uh, uh, 101st Airborne jump boots. Okay, <laughs> and your uniform right. is, is this is like, like more of an official academy yep. uniform you have on Correct. because you're an instructor. Yep. Okay, whereas Shelby, your uniform is what? It's a patrol uniform. Okay. So when I'm out working the streets, we have a little bit more of a comfort um, style uniform for us to, you know, run in, squat, okay. carry. And this is a little bit more restrictive. I, yeah, I, I'm noticing. I'm noticing like just kind of the differences here. Thinking, wow, there is, you know, and I don't see your. Where's your um, little speaky thing? You my my radio. If if I'm wearing my my patrol yeah. uniform, I have a, a pocket for it. Okay. All right. There we go. Wow. Subtle differences, <laughs> but really interesting that make your job more effective. So um, let's talk about some of the other things you do outside of your current assignments because your job doesn't just end when you get out of the car and clock out there's much more to this so Shelby um, so you know day to day um, you know you're making a lot of contact with folks mm -hmm. that's that's really what it's about it's about contacting people it's about making relationships I am more effective with the more people that I can connect with in my job mm -hmm. So Okay, and what about you besides teaching? Um, I'm a patrol officer is my first job. And again, I still work the, the south end and I work the swing shift, uh, which is in, in my hours and I'm sure yours as well. It's, it's called a call and you're just, you're constantly going because people are calling for, you know, a, a, a whole lot of different, uh, different incidents and different things that they need help with immediately. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a call to call shift. When I start, I, I look at what's standing in the queue and, and uh, there's, there's always something there's always something waiting for an officer to go to. So describe it. Describe if you can, or if there is such a thing, Officer Steve, as a typical day. A typical day would be uh, I start my day with turnout, and I go. Uh, you know, we talk about the you know either the mission of the day or people we're looking for, or things to watch out for, and then I get in my car and I just start answering calls. You know, uh, they give you an address, and this is where you go. They give you a brief synopsis of what's happening, and you go. And you respond. I can go anything from uh, um, uh, somebody needs assistance getting out of their getting their vehicle out of the out of the road to a uh, domestic violence to a, a, a robbery to just about just about anything under the sun. Never a typical day. Not ever. All right. Let's talk about qualifications to be a police officer. So first off, there's some physical qualifications. Go right ahead, Officer Steve. Well, you have to be able to do uh, uh, a whole lot of different physical things with your job. It is a it is a physical job. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have to be able to do, uh, for a set and standard, you have to be able to do uh, run, push-ups, sit-ups, and then run long distances. And so for your uh, 300, you have to be tested for your 300-meter run, and you have to be able to get that in under a minute for your maximum points when you're testing. And then you have to be able to do uh, uh, 38 sit-ups in about a minute and uh, 35 push-ups in about a minute, mm -hmm. and then uh, a mile-and-a-half run in about 1330. And uh, they're not... For someone that's that doesn't work out on a, on a regular basis, it might be difficult. All right. But if you're if you're in shape, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. So you should prep for this. And then let's talk about in the last three minutes here the mm -hmm. rest of the uh, application process, Shelby. So 
to be a police officer, you got to fill out an application. You bet. And they're providing that, I believe, on the computer, mm -hmm. Como Police Department. Um, you can go on. There's the application uh, process is open through mm -hmm. September. If you're like, eh, maybe I can't make the June 22nd test, there's what's called a job interest card that they can complete, and the city will communicate with them when testing dates are open and closed. They also communicate workshops that are coming up, which are great to attend. After that, you're going to go through a written test, the physical test that Officer Steve just talked about, and then you're going to have a brief background that they're going to want you to fill out on paper. You're going to have oral boards, psychological, medical. It's a lengthy process, but in the end, it is 100% worth it. I love that. So, Officer Steve, I want you to answer this first. What would you tell someone who's thinking about applying for uh, the Como Police Department? Um, I would say that it's a, it's a great job, the best region in the area, the best department. Uh, I've found the same camaraderie I found with the, my military friends, and then uh, even, even stronger friendships are, are built here. Um, if you're ready to work, and you're able and you're a kind person and you're able to communicate effectively and then have a natural desire to help people, then this is the place for you. I love that. If you're a kind person, that melts me. Thank you. What about you, Missy? I, I see policing as a, a communications job. I have to be able to communicate with you why I'm here and in your life right now. Yes. Why is it that we are having this communication? What's going wrong? Maybe what's going right? And what can we do to move forward? And if I can effectively communicate that with you, we both win. Um, so I believe that I would tell my own children, if you're looking at going into law enforcement, if you love it every single day, then you're doing the right job. But you have to be able to take people at their worst. Um, you have to go to, to work even on a day that you're having a tough day. Put that aside and remember your primary focus is this community. And Tacoma is by far the best community to serve. Wow, you too truly are two of the finest there. I mean, there are so many that we could not fit on this couch. <laughs> um, and I just want to say, thank you does not seem enough to say. I, I, I don't know how to say thank you to the two of you for risking your life every single day for people you don't even know. You walk away from people you love and would take a bullet for. And every day you make this world a safer place for us. So there's no words here. I have no words. I have nothing but gratitude. And thank you for setting the example. And I hope that when people see this, they understand. It's an honor and a privilege to apply for this job. So thank you for being such great examples. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. After this quick message, we will have uh, Mosh. The folks here to talk about May is uh, Hunger Awareness Month and our Mail Drive Month. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.